Uh, my name is John Amici, I'm a former NBA basketball player, also played in Europe. So I've got a pretty wide base of experience. Nowadays I'm a psychologist, but I also have my own uh, community-based basketball center up in Manchester, which is really successful. My name is Greg Tanner, whether it's editing MVP Basketball Magazine, or helping to put events on, working with companies like the NBA or Nike. I make quite a lot of basketball TV programs, producing and presenting. So basketball for me is, is, is a lot of things. It's, it's a career as well as passion. My name's Sam Nito, I run a British basketball website called hoopsfix.com, uh, which is basically a new site which has interviews, articles, features, videos, uh, all about British basketball. As most people know, it's involved with the sport. Know that there's, there's no coverage of it, uh, no media coverage. You don't see it in the papers, you don't see it on TV. It's very hard to follow, um, and I wanted to fill that gap. My name is Tayo Odelaja. Um, I'm otherwise known in the basketball circuit as Chosen. Um, the Urban Elite team, we're a big family. So what we're all about is basically we cover so much ground in the form of dancing, parkour, basketball, freestyle, anything really that can relate to a young person. Simon Buckner. I'm the managing director and the founder of BMTC, which is Behaviour Management Through Chess UK. It's cognitive development and success achievement program. Basketball, chess, it's not, it's not the first thing you think of. At that level, it's not about the game. It's about the head. It's about the mental stuff. My name is Theo. Okiwale, director of a basketball organization called Who's Got Game. What we aim to do is we aim to really raise the awareness of basketball in the community. What you see behind you is um, one of our famous summer events, um, Who's Got Game. We've got some coaching clinics for the kids, and everyone's just come here just to play and just to really showcase basketball to the community. I'm Simon Wade. I'm a basketball coach. I've been coaching since 1998 as a basketball coach with a great CV, you know, I'm level two coach. I've been doing it for, as we said, about 13 years. All right, my name is Taran Algar. I've been playing basketball and streetball uh, for 20 years. Basketball freestyling basically is tricks and skills. You know, you've got spinning on your finger. When they do see basketball freestylers, we do get a really, really good reaction. The camera phones come out, all sorts like that. So when they see it, they generally love it. Current status of basketball in the UK right now is pretty weak. There's not a lot of coverage of it, well, very little coverage of our domestic league on television. The media doesn't pay attention to basketball because basketball is bad. If basketball was great and people were interested in it, then the media would cover it. You're really lacking a, a, basically a professional route. A football-driven country, period. It's on everything, even your toothbrush. Our funding has been cut this year for English basketball. 1.6 million gone. The money gets pumped into football, rugby, cricket. There's not enough access to facilities. Uh, there's not enough purpose-built facilities. As far as attracting new people into the game, I don't think that helps. You, you can't go into play unless you're a member. What? Playing basketball has to be affordable, not four pounds an hour. There's free courts, don't get me wrong, but it rains. This is the UK. Basketball is bad because the people running basketball are, are poor. But if the government don't bring the funding, then it's going to go back to square one, which is what I'm worried about. Being a really good basketball player takes a lot of work. You know, a lot of athletes, you get injured, you hit the drink, you hit the gambling. Unfortunately, in the UK, if you want to do well, the first thing you need to do is get out of the country. Why would you bother in Britain so you can make £500 a season? Uh, my name's Oliver Chen, I'm 13 years old. I'd hopefully like to make to a BBL and then uh, go on to NBA. <laughs> Most people like Luol Deng had to go over to the States, got scouted there. Over here there's no one to really scout you because it's not that as big. To get good I need to uh, maybe in the future move over back to the States. If every kid that wants to get good has to leave England, that's a problem. When Jordan retired, I definitely think the league went downhill a bit and the global popularity of the game fell off. I mean, obviously, he, he basically was the face of basketball. That's the greatest athlete of all time. There's no way the league would be as it is today without Michael Jordan. He lifted it, you know, people turned the TV on to make sure they caught Michael Jordan hitting that fadeaway or flying through the air and dunking the ball or, you know. Certainly over here, interest fell off. You know, it's, it stopped being on, on Channel 4. They were the main guys showing the NBA. 
the league had uh, a real hard time trying to promote the game with him gone. So everyone trying to make the next Michael Jordan is going to be a next Michael Jordan. There never will be another Michael Jordan. On the plus side, our national GB team is the strongest it's ever been. We've just been accepted into the Olympics. You know, the effort is starting to be recognised and with the Olympics coming up, you don't really have a choice. Great potential in British basketball. So I think the NBA sees this place as a, as a growth area and they are doing things like, like the regular season games, like NBA Live and stuff like that. They can see the potential for it. That's why their European head offices are based in, in London. After three, NBA players have jumped. One, two, three. That they want British basketball to be successful, but they aren't going to do it for us. There are many, many young, passionate players that want to do really well and that work hard. I've been coaching, like I say, since 98 in, 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 in London, and the talent then, compared to the talent now, is no contest. The real thing right now would be to raise coaching standards, make basketball an affordable option. You get loads of guys, loads of guys just in their area who organise tournaments or, you know, little three-on-threes or summer leagues. And all of these guys are important because up and down the country, these are the people that, that make these basketball things happen. Going back to this UET, our affiliates and our general philosophy, we believe that working together is the new tomorrow. Basketball's going to be better than it is now in five years, I'll say that. So it's just about us more investing more into our communities and, and people want to know about the game. They, want, they, they need us to feed them. My vision for it in the next few years is, is I want it to transcend just being a website. I want it to be, you know, a, a British basketball lifestyle brand. Give us the facility, give me the time on court and I will get you the guys every single session. I hope genuinely from the bottom of my heart will change the game in a positive way. The majority of stuff we do here, we, we fund it ourselves, you know, we pay for our own stuff, you know, we, we put the money in our community and I mean, just, we're just praying that it will pay off, you know, someday. The more high profile events that we put on, the more um, people are going to get involved. When people actually see basketball, they're like, you know what, this is quite good. It's going to be that whether or not it goes commercial. If you really want to develop a league, it would take 10 years. It would be a long term investment. Smart sharp decision making based on developing English players for an English league. We have been given a really good opportunity here by FIBA. Um, I think they, they like the NBA, I think they recognise that there is a lot of potential for growth of basketball in Britain. So yeah, we're, we're coming man. It might take another 10 years, but we're coming. I think the most important moment in the history of British basketball could well turn out to be the moment FIBA said yes, you're, you're at the Olympics.